Today I'm going over three exercises with a kettlebell that will help improve your body. Let's get started. A few pieces of equipment, a bench or some sort of box, a kettlebell and possibly a mat or towel or sweatshirt for your knee if you want it. Thank you guys so much for joining in. You guys can follow along with me today as well as I'll be doing these exercises. This first exercise is going to be focused more to core and shoulder stability and shoulder strength. So we're going to get set up. I'm going to show you guys from, from two different angles. My back knee is on that mat. Opposite legs is in this dragon position. I'm just creating a 90 degree angle. I'm gonna grab my kettlebell and it's gonna be upside down kettlebell external rotation. This is going to focus on the shoulder, the core, as well as a little bit of the back. Now, if you guys are new to kettlebells and it feels very uncomfortable to do this and you feel like you're constantly moving and not able to stabilize, switch out to a dumbbell and utilize that very light dumbbell. And again, eventually you'll progress to this. Start out with a light kettlebell as well. So in this position here, I'm gonna have a kettlebell upside down, kettlebell over wrist, wrist over elbow, elbow line with shoulder. Opposite hand comes to my core. I'm pulling my belly button to the spine. I'm gonna externally rotate, rotate, elbow comes in line with the shoulder, then I come back. You're gonna perform 10 repetitions or we're gonna do 10 repetitions right now so you can see. All right, so that's three, Four, I'm working my core here as I'm pulling the belly button to the spine. I think that was five. I'm keeping that kettlebell balance over my body. As soon as it gets unstable or loses the positioning above my wrist, I'm gonna have to come out of it. But the focus and the goal here is to work on balance coordination as well as some shoulder strengthening, specifically external rotation. I think that was about 10. Now I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna change angles so you guys can see from the front angle. You don't have to use an ab mat or a mat or a cushion. I do for my knee since I have seasoned knees, we'll say, <laughs> old age. <laughs> oh man, if you guys are new here, I'd love your support by subscribing, turning on the notifications bell. And if this is helpful and entertaining and you like it, please share with others. Please feel free to leave a comment below of what you wanna see more of. Um, pretty sure it's not just me. <laughs> it's what I'm sharing education wise. So I think that was about five, maybe six. But notice how this front position, I'm bringing that form and wrist and lower arm directly on my shoulder, maybe slightly inside, but then I come to this 90 degree angle and then come back out. Again, 10 reps on each arm. That's me working on strengthening the shoulders. Next exercise, we're gonna go to the lower body now. This is gonna be more of a dynamic or static exercise of a stretch, but it's gonna be great for hip rotators. If you have tight hips, you sit a lot, you drive a lot, you have back issues or pain, raising the hand from a wah. All right, so you're gonna sit at the edge of the bench or a box. You're gonna, I prefer um, a bench because you're gonna get more of a 90 degree angle here. This isn't required, but if you have a box you're a little bit higher up, it may be more challenging, maybe easier. Everyone's a little different. You need to find what's best for you. I'm sharing what I found best for myself. In here, I'm gonna take this figure four position. So I'm gonna bring my ankle on top of my thigh. So I'm creating this figure four position. Now, if this is very difficult to get into and this stretch right here is enough, no kettlebell is needed, right? We're gonna use the kettlebell to amplify or add to this exercise. Notice that my ankle, my right side is underneath my knee, left ankle on top of my knee, right knee, and I'm creating this figure four position. Now, if this is super tight, super tense, you can just stay here, use your hand on your thigh, try to avoid pushing on your knee joint, think more thigh, low thigh, or thigh right above your knee. From here, I'm gonna hinge forward. There's a couple different ways you can do this. I can either round if you're really, really tight and you can only get flexion or um, movement in your body by rounding the back. If you're, a little, if you're a little more flexible and you have the ability, hinge from the hips, keep the back flat, get as far forward as possible in the stretch. If you're like, oh, that's not too bad, I want a little more, that's where the kettlebell comes in. Start light, please. If you don't have kettlebell, dumbbell works. I'm gonna place that kettlebell not directly on the knee joint, slightly closer to you, right? So more to the midline of your body, more to your hip. I'm gonna place that kettlebell. Now, if that's super tight and tense, two options or two ways to make it less tight. I can either bring that kettlebell closer to my thigh, hip, middle thigh, excuse me, or I lessen the load, right? Now I can either hold onto the handle or I can place my hand on the bell and you're gonna hold this 30 to 60 seconds. Now, if this is super impossible to hold that time frame, shorten it 15, 20 seconds. If you're like, oh, that's not that much, I want more, increase that time to a minute 30, 90 seconds, two minutes, or again, hinge from the hips. Now, you can also make this dynamic, so meaning I could move while I do the stretch. I could lift my leg up, hold for three, two, one, then release, let the weight pull it down. 
Again, we'll do that right side or left side, excuse me, and then we'll switch opposite side. Now, if you have any limitations, irritations, please listen to your body. I'm demonstrating everything that I'm capable of for myself. I will tell you my right side is tighter. Notice that my right knee is a lot higher than my left knee. I'm dealing with sciatic on my right side, herniated disc, and so I'm able to adjust and I need to um, be aware of what I'm doing <laughs> to not make it more of an irritant. All right, so same thing, kettlebell on the thigh, not knee joint, please. Same thing, I get stacked. Hinge forward. Now I'm significantly tighter when I do this exercise here. I start to feel that pinching in my back. So I'm just gonna stay right here. If you guys do have an irritation or something you can't push through, don't push through it, right? Everyone's a little different. But this is the second exercise. 30 to 60 seconds to start. We're gonna go in kind of a, um, like a waterfall. So you're going to do that external rotation with the shoulders. Then you're gonna do the stretch on each side. Pretty sure it's been over 30 to 60 seconds as I'm trying to talk through this, but that's okay. All right, so that's the second exercise. Third and final exercise that we're gonna get into here. We're gonna move this ab mat out of the way a little bit. This is gonna be more for the full body, meaning we're gonna get a little bit of core, a little bit of balance, stability. You're gonna take this light kettlebell. Dumbbell also works as well, so if you don't have a kettlebell, you can utilize that. You're gonna get the kettlebell to the outside of the hand. Now, if you've never had the kettlebell in this position, meaning I'm not holding onto the bell of the handle, I have the kettlebell resting on my forearm, back of my wrist top of the wrist, however you wanna think about it. This will not feel the most comfortable. You can add a wrist strap, you can add some sort of cushion if you want, some wrist, wrist strap or wrist tape, whatever you like. Eventually you'll get more comfortable. Notice that my thumb and finger are cradling the edge in the corner here right now. So I'm actually having it at an angle versus straight up. It's gonna make it a little easier to rest on the form. From here, we're gonna do a kettlebell windmill. I'm gonna widen my stance significantly. So think of a standing straddle where my feet are outside my shoulders, feet are parallel to one another. I'm gonna press my arm overhead, Eyes are gonna stay on the kettlebell, wrist over shoulder, arm locked out as much as you can. Opposite hand finds your thigh. You're gonna slide your hand down your thigh as low as you can go. My hip just popped if you guys heard that. If you can get to your ankle foot, beautiful. Now you don't wanna be resting on it, you just wanna use this as a guide. So your core, your midsection should be bracing. I'm pulling the belt into the spine. I'm getting a little bit of twisting rotation. Hand to the thigh, slide down the thigh all the way to the ankle, hold and then come back up. I personally like my fingers extended here, if you can see them in the video. You're gonna perform 10 repetitions on one side. If that's too much, start off with six to eight. Then you're gonna to go to the other side. If you have a watch, rotate the face around. Hand extended, right? Wrist over shoulder. I find my thigh, I slide all the way down. Foot, ankle, shin, whatever you can get, and then come back up. Now this is very difficult. Maybe stop right at below the knee and then come back up, all right? If you feel comfortable, you can go all the way down, go all the way down and then come back up. This is gonna require some shoulder mobility. Also gonna require some flexibility, positioning. If your hamstrings or inner thighs are very tight, you might not be able to get all the way down there. It might be even more challenging to hold a, a load like a kettlebell. You could use a dumbbell. If you're new and you're like, man, I can't even hold load, create a fist. Right, extend the fist overhead, try to lengthen the body as much as you can so the hand's being pulled to the sky, same thing. Twist, rotate down, and then come back up. Some people feel like the weight allows them to stabilize a little better, meaning their arm just isn't jutting off to the side, but if holding a load is very difficult or not attainable for you, body weight is where it's at. And you could do this just as a warm-up as well. This is part of my warm-up when I'm doing my conditioning pieces, when I'm doing my lifting pieces, when I'm doing an easy day in the gym. All right, so that's one round. We're gonna do a second round. Ideally, we wanna be doing two rounds of this, if possible. Now, I personally like to go one exercise to the second exercise, to the third exercise, and then cycle around versus doing the two back and back here. But nothing is wrong with doing that, that is an option. And I lost count, I think that was six maybe. <laughs> Seven, eight, this is one of my favorite exercises for external rotation, nine, 10, and this is, if you guys are wondering, this is 18 pounds. I could not, when I first started doing this, I could not do this.